This video is produced to help you understand the importance of maintenance for operating the Kobelco hydraulic excavator under the best conditions. This video is developed to help owners maintain major parts, starting with the SK200-8 type overseas machine, the fuel system of its engine, its lubricating system, and hydraulic system, with actual maintenance matters in the field. You, the operator, are working on the front line of service. Please use this video positively to prevent any trouble beforehand and help you to extend the performance of the Kobelco hydraulic excavator. In order to maximize the performance of the machine at all times, daily maintenance is extremely important as well as performing inspection and maintenance regularly. At some working sites, there is a lot of trouble because of a lack of knowledge about the machine. For instance, if fuel is stored under bad conditions, since refilling the tank may be left out in the open, rain and dust could get into the tank. Moreover, the fuel is sometimes a low-grade mixed one. Therefore, we cannot use the high-performance engine efficiently and the result could be a big trouble, such as an engine breakage. With this situation in mind, we would like you, as the maintenance specialist, to remind your customer about the proper storage area conditions and how to properly refuel fuel and engine oil, as well as proper inspection and maintenance at every opportunity. Continuing such activities improve your customer's awareness, decrease machine malfunctions, and contributes to raising operation efficiency. Next, let's start to talk about a minimum requirement of the basic knowledge to maintain the machine and operating precautions. At many working sites, the maintenance work performed in the field, where wind and rain is not avoidable, is general. It is essential to properly take measures for such conditions. Prepare a dust-proof cover Use it when necessary to make efforts not to allow rainwater and dust into any part. Take dirt measures so as not to allow dirt and mud into parts by mistake. During the maintenance, this is very important. Firstly, remove dirt from each service part completely. We recommend the Kobelco Genuine Cleaner product. Then start the service work. To prevent damage from dirt, the reused part should be put into a sealable plastic bag, such as a Ziploc, temporarily. Of course, always keep the parts container clean. Please wear safety shoes, a helmet, and long sleeve shirts for the safety work. Use safety glasses if necessary. Before starting actual maintenance, make sure to put the Do Not Operate tag on the machine. It protects the serviceman from accident due to a careless mistake. Store the fuel, engine oil, and hydraulic oil in the storage where wind and rain do not blow in. Please look at this picture. Because of leaving the reservoir out in the outdoors, you can see water in the bottom of the tank. If you use such contaminated fuel, the engine may be damaged. But the slightest consideration can prevent trouble beforehand. Please tell your customer
to be aware of such precautions. Next, let's talk about actual maintenance, starting from the maintenance of the engine area. First of all, is the inspection of fuel strainer and fuel level, and refill with fuel if needed. Place the machine on hard, level ground and check the fuel level on the multi-display. Open the filler cap. Check for contamination and damage of the fuel tank strainer. If you find dust in the strainer, please clean it. When you fill the tank with fuel, make sure to put the strainer into the normal position. If you don't properly position the strainer, foreign matter will get into the fuel tank and it can cause trouble with the engine fuel system. The worst thing is that the output of the engine will decrease. Be careful about the strainer. The next consideration is draining water from the fuel filter. If draining is not properly performed, moisture from air in the tank, which gets cold at night, condensates, and the dew of condensation gradually deposits at the bottom. If the filler cap does not fit with the inlet, water enters it through the cap. The entering of water will cause the following to occur. The water decreases engine output, it accelerates the wear of the fuel supply pump and also the wear of the fuel injector plunger. All parts of the fuel system in the common rail high pressure injection system are weak, especially against water and dust. And daily maintenance is very important. Every eight hours or during pre-start inspection, make sure to drain the water out. Loosen this drain valve bottom of the filter and drain any water contained in it. Place a container to receive the water under the pipe. Loosen the drain valve and drain the water from the main filter too. If you need to drain the water frequently, it is suspected that there is water in the fuel tank bottom. Connect a hose to the drain valve, which is located on the bottom of the fuel tank, and remove any water-contaminated sediment from the drain valve of the tank bottom completely. Replace the main fuel filter and pre-filter within the specified period. Clogging is caused by neglecting the maintenance period and the use of dirty fuel. If maintenance is neglected, this causes a decrease of the engine output and the cavitation caused by the suction failure will occur and the fuel supply pump will be damaged. Replace the fuel filters both of the main filter and pre-filter with new genuine filters. At first, clean the filter area. If mud and water still remain, they will cause damage. Clean the filter area completely. After washing the filter, wipe it with a clean cloth and reconfirm that there is no mud or dirt. At first, drain the fuel completely. Close the fuel cut valve and shut off the fuel from the fuel tank. Loosen the air bleeding plug on the top of both the main filter and pre-filters. Then, loosen the drain valve to drain the fuel. Using the filter wrench, remove the pre-filter. Cover housing with a sealable plastic bag, such as a Ziploc. 
Clean the case with cleaning fluid. Remove drain valve and replace O-ring with a new one. Install drain valve. Install an O-ring in the case. Apply fuel to the O-ring of the filter in advance. Take a new pre-filter out of the package immediately before installation. Install. The position where fastened about one half turn after the filter comes into contact with the filter head. This is proper. Attach the filter wrench in this way and turn the bowl to remove it. Strong force is required when removing the filter body. Remove it carefully so as not to slip off. To prevent dust intrusion, cover the housing with a sealable bag such as a Ziploc. Before assembly, wash the disassembled parts and bowl thoroughly. Wipe the foreign matter off and put them into a sealable bag to help keep them clean. Install a new O-ring into the bowl and apply fuel to the O-ring. Do not take out a new filter from the package until just before the installation of the filter. Install the O-ring to the filter and apply new fuel to the surface of the O-ring. Integrate the filter into the bowl. The locking position is a position about one half of a turn using a filter wrench. After the filter comes into contact with the filter head. Tighten the bowl further by wrench. Reconnect the water sensor next. When installing the filter, if you tighten it too much, the body will be deformed. It will cause air and dust to get into the fuel line. This causes the engine trouble and damage of the supply pump and injector. Moreover, if you tighten the filter too loosely, a gap will occur and you will have the above mentioned trouble. Install the filter carefully. Make sure to bleed air when replacing the fuel filter. Open the fuel cut valve. From the air bleeding plug of the pre-filter, air and fuel are automatically drained out due to the fuel's own weight. When the air does not come out, tighten the plug with the specified torque and bleed the main filter of air by applying pressure with a priming pump. After air is completely bled, install the air bleeder plug and tighten it to the specified torque. At this time, if you tighten the plug too much, the thread might be damaged. If the thread is damaged, air and foreign matter get in the filter, and the resulting damage causes engine trouble. Tighten it by applying the right torque. Lastly, pressure it with the priming pump again. Make sure to check the engine oil level before working every day. out the engine oil level gauge and if the oil mark shows between L and H it is at a proper level. 
Moreover, please check whether any foreign matter, such as metal powder or sludge, adheres to the oil and is not diluted by the mixing of fuel. If the oil level is lower than the specified level, open this filler cap and refill with genuine engine oil. Exchange the engine oil in the filter at the first 50 hours of operation. After that, exchange them every 250 hours. Firstly, replace the used engine oil with new oil. At first, remove the undercover which is located under the engine. Connect a hose to the drain valve of the oil pan. Open the valve to drain the engine oil. Check the drained oil for foreign matter, such as metal, contained in the oil and not diluted abnormally by the mixing of fuel. When the engine oil is drained pr completely, close the drain valve. Disconnect the hose and install the undercover to the original position. Then, remove the engine oil filter. Before that, wash and clean around the filter area. Prepare a container for waste oil. Remove the drain bolt on the bottom of the filter and drain oil from the filter. Tighten the drain bolt temporarily when engine oil has drained. Using the filter wrench and remove the filter. Install a new filter. Do not take the filter out from the package until just before installing it. Apply new oil to the surface seal in advance. Install the filter. Previously, we filled the oil in a new filter before installing it. However, we improved this procedure. The previous method made it highly possible for foreign matter, such as dust or dirt, to enter. So we do not use the previous method anymore. After the filter contacts with the filter head, turn the filter about three quarters of a turn. This position is the proper position. Now let's talk about the inspection of engine cooling system. Check the coolant in the radiator reservoir tank every day. If the level is like this, it is okay. If the coolant is lower than this level, make sure the temperature of the coolant is sufficiently low to touch it and refill it. The lack of coolant, the proper usage of antifreeze, and the usage of hard water cause corrosion and damage of the radiator and engine. So use the genuine coolant specified by Cobelco. Check the radiator cap. If it is dirty, clean it. Moreover, if it is loose fitting and the cap seal shows deterioration, coolant will gush out. So please replace the cap with a new one. This is not a regular requirement, but if you find contamination of a radiator, oil cooler, or intercooler fin, remove the protection net and clean them. Two nets are provided and fixed at four points. Remove the four wing bolts. The nets can be removed by lightly pulling them upward. The dirt is easily removed by cleaning with tap water. If you run with muddy cooling fins, it will cause trouble, such as the engine overheating. Do not use high pressure water for cleaning the fin. Use high pressure air or wash with tap water. Install nets. Tighten wing bolts securely.
Every 250 hours, check not only the fan belt, but also all radiator hoses for damage, such as cracks, permanent set-in fatigue, and so on. When any ripples or cracks are found when pressing hoses by hand, they are degraded. The use of a degraded hose might damage the entire engine and be in danger of a gushing coolant out at any time. This can also cause seizure of the engine. Make sure to replace degraded hoses with genuine parts. Change coolant every 2,000 hours. First check that the coolant temperature and pressure are low and remove the cover on the under section of the radiator. Connect a drain hose to the drain valve and loosen the drain valve and drain the coolant. Remove the cover on the under section of the engine and connect a drain hose to the drain bolt on the side of the engine. Loosen the drain bolt on the side of the engine, then drain the coolant completely. Then, when filling it up with soft water, through the supply port on the upper section, clean the radiator and the inside of the engine water jacket with the engine operated at a low idle. Stop the engine when the clean water has drained and stop supplying it with water. When the coolant is drained completely, close the two drain valves at once. Put cleaning solution in and supply it with full water. Clean the radiator and the inside of the engine while operating the engine at low idle. For the proper cleaning time, follow the instruction manual. After cleaning, open the two drain valves and close them at the time when they are completely drained. Close them again. And while supplying and overflowing with soft water, open drain valve again. Run the engine low idle. Stop the engine when the clean water has drained and stop supplying water. When completely drained, close the drain valve and tighten securely the drain bolt on the side of the engine. Make sure to use a long life coolant with a content of 50% concentration to prevent corrosion of the radiator and the inside of the engine. When finished supplying the radiator with water, tighten the radiator cap and start the engine. Check that the engine is free from leakage of coolant while operating the engine 5 minutes at low idling and 5 minutes at high idling and at the same time, the mixed air is also removed. Make sure that the temperature indicator on the multi-display is correct. Lastly, remove the reservoir tank and drain coolant from the tank. Clean the inside of the tank and supply it with long-life coolant with 50% concentration to the specified level. and supply the radiator with long life coolant of 50% concentration to the level of filling port. Let's look at removing and installing procedure of the radiator, which cannot remove the dust by blowing the air because of heavy clogging, as an example. 
After confirming complete draining of any coolant, disconnect the lower hose. Remove the bolts of the lower plate. Displace the lower plate as shown. Disconnect the wiring connector on the coolant level switch. Remove the radiator hose. Remove the upper plate. Loosen right and left fastening SEMS bolts from the upper plate assembly. Remove the upper plate assembly. Loosen the two bolts which fasten the radiator upper core. Remove the support pins from the engine hood and open the hood fully while maintaining working space. Remove the radiator. During this time, confirm any missing rubber bushings from the installing section at the underside of the radiator core. Wash the radiator core with tap water. Wash thoroughly inside the radiator with tap water. Install the radiator slowly and straight. Next, find the position for where to fit the rubber bushing on the installing section onto the underside of the radiator core and press the bushing in. Attach and tighten the two bolts used for installing the radiator. Install the upper plate assembly. Install the top plate. Connect the wiring connector of the coolant level switch. Return the lower plate to the former position, then install it. Install the radiator hose. Supply it with a specified quantity of long life coolant. Now, removing installing of the radiator has been completed. Make sure to check the tension of the fan belt once every 8 hours. Adjust the tension every 250 hours. There are two places to be checked. Press the fan belt on the upper part of the engine by hand. When the deflection is within the specified range, it is proper. When the fan belt is damaged or shows excess deflection, it might cause overheating of the engine, insufficient battery charging, and inefficient cooling of the air conditioner. In case of any of those failures, be sure to replace both belts at the same time. When adjusting belts, stop the engine and wait until the engine gets cool. Let's start the adjustment. When the air conditioner belt is stretched, loosen the mounting nut on the idle pulley. Loosen the adjusting nut slightly and tighten the adjusting bolt. Then the belt is stretched. Adjust the deflection properly while pressing the belt. Tighten the mounting nut securely and lock it. Next, adjust the tension of the fan belt. First, remove the right fan guard while maintaining workspace. Loosen the alternator mounting nut.
Loosen the adjusting nut and tighten the adjusting bolt gradually. Adjust the belt to the proper tension while pressing it. Check the deflection. Tighten the mounting nut securely and lock it. After adjustment, run the engine for 5 minutes at low idling speed and reconfirm the tension of the belt is proper. Lastly, install the fan guard. Then the adjustment has been completed. Check and clean the air cleaner element every 250 hours. Remove the outer element as shown and remove any dust on the outer element using compressed air as indicated. Each 250 hours clean the outer element. After six cleaning cycles, replace the element. The cleaning of the inner element is not required until it is replaced, but replace it with a new one, together with the outer element, every 1,000 hours in dirty conditions. Do not take out the element from its package until immediately before installation. Install the cover directing the arrow upward. Check the rubber hoses of the engine air intake system every 120 hours. Five rubber hoses are used from turbocharger to intercooler and from intercooler to intake airport. Check that each hose is free from the loose clamp damage. The use of a damaged hose reduces the output, resulting in an increase of exhaust black smoke and extra wear of piston and liner, and finally, unrepairable damage. Tighten loose sections of hoses to the specified tightening torque. When a crack is found, replace it with a new hose, a genuine one. In checking the hydraulic oil level, place the machine on hard and level ground and extend the attachment fully. Place the bucket on the ground. When the oil level is within the specified range, it is acceptable. When the hydraulic oil level is low, noise is emitted by cavitation of the hydraulic pump and seizure of the hydraulic pump results in breakage. Malfunction due to air contamination of hydraulic oil can occur. Conversely, in case of excess hydraulic oil quantity, the tank breather frequently breathes and oil comes out of the breather and spills on the upper surface of the tank. There is a danger of developing a crack on the hydraulic tank wall. Constantly ensure that the oil level is properly. Contamination of water in the hydraulic oil might damage the hydraulic components. If the hydraulic oil looks bubbly white, and a mix of water in hydraulic oil is suspected, replace the oil immediately. Replace the return filter every 1,000 hours. During engine operation, the inside of the tank is pressurized and under high temperature, it is dangerous. When removing the filling cap, stop the engine and shift the safety lock lever to the locked position. Keep the surface of the tank, especially the cover area, clean. Remove the breather cap and be sure to press and release valve.
to release pressure inside of the hydraulic tank. Remove the cover mounting bolt on the upper face of the tank. Remove the cover, take out the spring and store it in a sealable plastic bag such as a Ziploc to prevent contamination. Remove the element assembly, then be sure to remove the oil completely. Fit a secure cover temporarily to prevent foreign matter from entering the tank. Turn the handle of the removed element assembly and disassemble it. Replace the O-ring on the check valve. Clean the check valve. Replace the packing on the plate. Install a new O-ring on the check valve. Replace the element with a new one and assemble the element assembly. To prevent dust from entering, store properly the assembled element assembly. Remove the cover and replace the O-ring with a new one. Slowly put the assembled element assembly into the tank. Install the spring and attach the cover. Tighten bolts to the specified torque in diagonal order. Lastly, start the engine and move the attachment. Return it to the checking position again. Here, recheck hydraulic oil levels. Clean the suction strainer every 2,000 hours and during this time, replace the hydraulic oil simultaneously. The clogging of the suction strainer might cause noise to be emitted from the hydraulic pump due to its cavitation. In the worst case, this results in damage to the pump and hydraulic components. The main causes of damage are dust entering through the breather and foreign matter accidentally contaminating the oil during refilling and service maintenance. As a result, trouble occurs. Clean the suction strainer within the specified interval. After bleeding air from the tank, remove the cover of the suction strainer. Drain the strainer of oil completely and pull it out. Put the strainer in a plastic bag temporarily to prevent contamination by foreign matter. Temporarily cover the pump hole with its cover to prevent contamination. Clean it with light cleaning oil or cleaning fluid completely and check it after completely drying.
When holes or flaws are found on the surface, replace it with a new one. Check the O-rings on the bottom of the strainer, and if deformation or a flaw is found, replace it with a new one. If any metal chip is found in the suction strainer, the hydraulic system might be damaged. Contact Cobelco. Then install the strainer. Slowly install the strainer into the inlet port on the bottom of tank. Replace the damaged O-ring with a new one. Tighten the cover bolts to the specified torque. Check the hydraulic oil level again by the same procedure as replacement of the return filter. Change hydraulic oil every 2,000 hours, and at the same time, clean the suction strainer. Place the machine on hard and level ground and swing it so that the drain plug position on the hydraulic tank comes to the midpoint of tracks. Retract the attachment cylinder and stop the engine. Then shift the safety lock lever to the locked position. After releasing pressure from the tank, Remove the cover on the tank's upper section. First, drain hydraulic oil in the tank by use of a pump, and at the same time, most oil has been drained. Put the container under the hydraulic tank and loosen the drain plug slowly. Next, drain the waste oil. Drain the waste oil completely. Check that the drain plug is free from metal chips. Clean the plug and attach it to the plug hole. Tighten it to the specified torque. Fill the hydraulic oil from the tank's upper section. Fill the hydraulic oil while confirming the level with a gauge. Install the cover when the oil reaches the proper level. Finally, check the hydraulic oil level again by the same procedure as replacement of a return filter. Replacement of the breather element is non-scheduled. If the element is dirty, replace the dirty element at that time. Assemble it by the reverse procedure of disassembling a breather element. Clean the pilot line filter every 2,000 hours. Disconnect the hose connected to the pump and remove the connector and line filter in order. Then install it after cleaning. Replace the damaged parts with new ones. Now we start checking the maintenance of the swing system. Check the oil level of swing reduction gear every 120 hours. When the oil is within the range of the level gauge, it is acceptable. When the oil level is low, this might be caused by an oil leak from the output seal of the swing reduction unit. By checking through the drain hole, inspect the bath gear and pinion gear in the swing reduction unit for any leak of gear oil. 
When short of oil, the gear could be damaged by poor lubrication. Conversely, when the oil level is too high, it is suspected that the leaked oil through the output shaft seal of the swing motor might be mixed. As a result, leaked oil from a seal result in damage to swing reduction gear due to poor lubrication. When filling the oil, remove the plug of the filling port and fill with the specified gear oil. Clean the plug and wrap sealing tape around the thread part of the tube band, then attach it. Next, change the oil of the swing reduction unit. Change the oil every 2,000 hours. Immediately after operation, the oil temperature is high. Therefore, start the service after the temperature drops to warm, not hot. An oil container of 3 liters or larger is required. Remove the drain plug on the rear side of the swing reduction unit and drain the oil. Check strictly for metal powder or other contaminants in the drained oil. Clean the drain plug carefully with light oil and wrap sealing tape around the thread part. Attach the drug plane. Tighten the plug to the specified torque. Remove the plug of the filling port and fill with the specified gear oil. Wrap sealing tape around the filling port and then attach the plug. The oil change is completed. Apply grease to the reduction unit every 2,000 hours. If greasing of the swing reduction unit is neglected, the bearing section of the reduction unit might be damaged. Apply grease of about 200 cubic centimeters equivalent to one half of a cartridge through the grease nipple of swing reduction unit. Or apply grease until overflowing from the relief valve. If overflowing does occur, stop the injection. Check the grease in the swing grease bath every 2,000 hours. If water contamination is found in the swing grease bath, drain it through the drain port. When grease is required to be changed due to degradation, contact Cobelco. Apply grease to the slewing bearing every 500 hours. Since one grease nipple is provided, apply grease four times while slewing the upper structure 90 degrees at a time. Now we start checking for maintenance of the undercarriage. First, adjust the track tension. Adjust the tension every 50 hours. If adjustment of the track tension is neglected, a link might come into the roller. The collar of the roller might be worn and might run off. Make sure to adjust the crawler tension regularly. Remove mud from the undercarriage of the machine, especially the shoes, sprockets, and idlers. Place the machine on hard and level ground and lift up the crawler on one side by forcing the boom down. The midpoint of the track crawler is sagging as shown in the picture. Adjust the distance to the specified range between 320 millimeters to 350 millimeters. The tension of the track crawler can be adjusted by applying grease into the grease nipple of the idler adjuster on the lower frame. On the other hand, when loosening track tension, Discharge grease while slowly loosening the grease nipple one turn at the maximum.
Then, since high pressure is applied to the grease cylinder, the quick loosening of a nipple might cause serious injury due to high pressure grease gushing out. Use caution. Do not let anybody in this working site during service other than concerned people. When grease is not discharged completely, try to move the crawler slowly and slightly. When the sagging distance reaches the specified range, tighten the grease nipple to the specified torque. Adjust the track tension on the other side by using the same procedure. Move the machine forward and then reverse it once to adjust so that the track tension of the right and left sides is the same. Then check it again. Next, check the oil level of the travel reduction units. Check the oil level every 120 hours. Traveling with an oil shortage might damage a gear inside of the travel reduction unit due to poor lubrication. Place machine on hard and level ground and move right and left crawlers respectively until the level plug of the travel reduction unit comes to this position. Immediately after operation, be careful when working because the oil temperature is high and pressure could be trapped inside the motor. Remove the level plug and check the oil level for contamination. It is acceptable when the oil level comes to the brim of the plug hole. If short of full, remove the filling plug and fill with the specified gear oil. The proper oil level position is just before the oil slightly overflows from the level check hole. Clean the level plug and filling plug and check the o-ring. Next, install each plug and tighten them to the specified torque. Check the other side by using the same procedure. The oil change for the travel reduction unit is 500 hours for the first time and every 2,000 hours thereafter. Change the oil by the same procedure as the oil level checking work. Remove the level plug of the travel reduction unit and drain the oil. Check that the drained oil is free from metal chips or other contaminants. If found, contact Cobelco. When no trouble is found, clean the drain plug and install it into the drain hole. Fill the specified oil. The quantity is 5.3 liters. Tighten the plug to the specified torque. Similarly, change oil for travel motors on the other side with an equivalent amount of oil. Then, start the check and maintenance for the operator's seat area. First, clean the filters of the air conditioner. Clean the filters every 250 hours. The air conditioner has two air filters for inside air circulation and outside air intake. Clogging dust decreases the cooling capacity of the air conditioner. Clean the filters periodically by using tap water or compressed air. Maintain the adequate distance from the filter to the nozzle to prevent damage of filters and clean them. When a filter is damaged, replace it with a new one. Apply grease to the pushrod section of the control level each 500 hours. Using a small minus driver, push the cutout part of the rubber boot to remove the rubber boot from the pilot valve.
apply a small amount of grease to the push rod's rotating and sliding section. Check the electrolyte levels, terminals, cable and other battery parts every 50 hours. Remove the protective cover on the battery's upper section and clean the battery surface area. Also check the electrolyte level. Remove the cap. It is acceptable if the electrolyte level is within the specified range. However, when a shortage is evident, make up the shortage with distilled water. When rust is found on a battery terminal, remove the terminal and clean it with a wire brush. Next, apply grease to the terminal. Then, also check the battery retainer and bolt for looseness. Check the cable terminal for looseness. In the worst case, a fire explosion might develop. There is danger of damaging the computer on the excavator and or damaging the engine due to a voltage surge developed because of a short circuit. Be careful about short circuiting. Lubricate the attachment regularly according to the specified interval. There are 16 lubrication points on the attachment. Apply the specified grease to lubricate. The shortage of grease on the attachment causes wearing of the pin and bushing early. This causes an emitting noise. Continued use will cause serious damage of the pin. Eventually, the pin will break. When the machine is working in severe conditions and at a dusty site or at an underwater site, make sure to apply grease to attachments every day. This is a shorter interval than in the operator's manual. What is your impression of the checking and maintenance service for the Cobelco Hydraulic Excavator? We have explained only the important matters briefly. The machine is much improved with significant advances in cutting edge technology for recent times. However, maintenance service is essential to maintain and achieve the high performance of the machine. Furthermore, now we know that protective measures against maintenance and control, that is, proper storage and environmental arrangements for fuel and oil in use, and complete cleaning are the most effective means to prevent entry of foreign matter and to reduce frequency of trouble occurrences. Before something happens, and to avoid troubles, do depend on the daily practice of excavator servicemen who can directly educate it users and consumers. In the future, service management requires detailed assistance. When referring to our operator's manual, we hope that this DVD tool is used as the best method of assistance for operation from this time forward and is also used as a textbook for further improvement of technical skills involving maintenance.